The future of the world belongs to the youth of the world, and it is from the youth and not from the old that the fire of life will warm and enlighten the world. It is your privilege to breathe the breath of life into the dry bones of many around you. It is when a young man realizes his value in a society that makes a whole difference. An empowered youth empowering a brother. That is Swahiba indeed. My name is Marlene Aloch, 18 years of age. The skills that I've gotten through the mentorship and empowerment program, I'm putting, in, putting them into use right now, especially detergent making. I've been making liquid soap and selling it to the neighborhood community. My name is Christine Agu. I am 23 years old and I'm so delighted to be here at this wonderful moment. Swahiba is like a home to me. Uh, staff in that, uh, in Swahiba, are my family. Like they're the first people who will always step in, whether you have a problem or when you are in happiness, Swahiba will always be there for you. So Swahiba uh, has been an amazing place to, for me to be and also walking this journey, seeing the smile, kama ni kulia tutaria sisi wote, kama ni kufraia sisi wote tutafraia. So, generally, Swaiba is a home to me, and also is a, like, a godsend, like, God and in it was from high school, and then I was able to join Swahiba, and I've been, I've been learning different things, and then getting to reach out to these people, imekuwa a blessing sana. My name is uh, Peter Bungu, I am uh, the founder, uh, director of Swahiba uh, Networks. Uh, Swahiba is a Swahili word, uh, which means a close friend. Uh, it was uh, picked from the relationship between uh, David and Jonathan. Uh, the Swahili va version says uh, that uh, Yaudi alikuwa Swahiba wake Jonathani. And, um, and that's where the name of our organization is, has been picked. It's, um, it's informed by the challenges I faced as a young person in my teenage years where I needed someone to walk with me, to mentor me, to uh, journey with me in life and help me understand the challenges that I was facing. But I didn't find one. So when I grew up and I had the opportunities that I, you know, God has brought my way, I intentionally uh, made it my mission uh, to be the Swahiba for young people who uh, need the Swahiba in their lives. Peter Abungo tells us how the Swahiba networks began and the inspiration behind it. I was privileged to get an education, a uh, scholarship to go and study out of the country uh, to study theology and Christian youth work, uh, a four-year um, undergrad program. I had a desire to come back to Kenya and, and make a difference in the lives of young people because as a young person, I really struggled. And, um, and so with that opportunity coming uh, for me to get an education, at the end of my four year um, uh, period in the UK, I packed my bags and came back to Kenya. Uh, but before coming back home, um, I had a very interesting experience. I was um, reading an article, uh, Christian Youth Work magazine, and in that article, there had been a, a group from um, an Anglican church in the UK that had come to, to do some missions in the slums of Kibera. And this group of, uh, of, of people encountered a young person, uh, a young man who was about 14 year old that had lost both of his parents to HIV and AIDS and was asking the same questions that I was asking when I lost my mom at the age of 14. And so, that triggered a great desire for me to come into this community and look for that young person. And, um, and I packed my bags and left and came back. I had never been to Kibera, but I had heard of it. I uh, grew up my entire life in Nakuru. And so um, uh, I remember one time I was in a bank setting up a business, a tours and travel business. And there was a gentleman in the bank um, who was um, helping me make the transactions. And uh, I, I think as a bank policy of knowing your, 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 your customers, he started asking me all these questions. Uh, what are you, you going to do with the, this money and all that? I started telling him, my plan is to set up a business so that it can support me, so that I can uh, mentor young people in the slums and, and disciple them and, and help them you know, find their way in life. I know someone who would be uh, who does some amazing work in, in Islam. So uh, 
But those days, KBS was still there, the, the ones where you park people like sardines. Um, and we, we got into that bus and uh, I came and uh, I landed in Kibera. The first time I landed in Kibera, I was so shocked at the, con the conditions under which people were living um, because I'd never seen it. And so that just made it so difficult for me uh, to even think of how on earth am I going to make a difference here because the need is so big and yet I'm so small. <laughs> And uh, I remembered what I read in that article. When I read that article about that young person, I just wanted to come to this community and find the one person. So I said, you know what, I'm going to start with one. And uh, as they say, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. I landed at this big center called the Blue House. The gentleman there called Timothy Mulay was feeding hundreds of kids. And every meal time, children would come out of the woodwork. And, um, and they would feed these kids. And now I had an audience, a captive audience, that I, I could, you know, I could mentor, I could disciple, I could train, I could invest my life in. And that's where, where Swahiba started. And it, it grew from that point. I remember one time I was mentoring teenagers and I was telling them about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit and how it is important for us to, to guard it and to take care of it and to, uh, and to even desire to walk in purity as a way of honoring God. Crispin, a beneficiary and a long-time friend of Peter, tells me how he joined the organization. My name is Chris uh, Omondi. Uh, I was born and raised in Kibera here. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I went to school in Kibera here. My life kind of evolved here uh, more. So uh, I'm also working here in the community with the people of Kibera. We are doing a community work with them. There's a guy who came in and his name was Peter. He came in as a youth pastor in that church, that particular church, and uh, he began to do uh, a mentorship, working with the young people and just preaching to them. And uh, it uh, came to a point where he wanted a few young people to take them to the camp. And luckily enough, I was one of them that were picked and we went there. I went there and gave my life to Christ. I began to walk um, with him. Uh, he mentored me and uh, I am one of the people, one of the many people that he walked with. And I chose to remain and work with him to do what we are now doing in the community. We have uh, worked with him for several years. This is, I think, is the 18th year. Uh, 18th or, yeah, 18th or 15 to 18 year. I'm not quite sure, but it's in that region. So we have uh, done a lot of things in the, for the community. Because we, when, when part of my life I kind of lived in the village, and uh, based on the circumstances that I was in, I found myself in and uh, I was kind of neglected uh, uh, by, the, by, by my dad, if I may say so. Uh, and uh, we live in a very bad state of life. Uh, life, a life of sleeping without eating, working with a torn cloth and uh, sometimes you don't go to school because there's no money and all this. So when I realized that, uh, because when I joined Swahiba, I began to see these things. Uh, and I began to see people uh, not going to school in uh, the slums. I began to see people not having enough food to feed themselves or to feed their families. I began to see people not even affording the medical. Uh, when they are sick, they they rather walk into a pharmacy, buy a Panadol to kill the pain, but not to cure the pain. So that has made me to, it actually opened my eyes, and I was able to know that uh, it gave me an opportunity to serve them. And it's increased even the level of passion that I used to have, and realized that, because now I have been given the opportunity to be here, and work more directly with these people, the widows, the young girls, the, young, the kids that do not have shoes, then we, 
God was preparing me to do such a thing in this community because uh, if somebody come to me and tell me that they have slept without eating, it has happened to me and I now understand. If someone comes to me and say that they lack school fees to go to school, it has happened to me way back and I totally understand. So it is not a story that someone will come and tell me and then I say, ah, that's, that's, or it's normal or it's okay. It's no longer okay for someone to sleep without food and it's never okay for a child to lack the school fees to go to school and even the food. Not only is the organization keen on orphans and youth empowerment, but there's always something more. My name is Imuna Kweroth. Most of the people call me Amy around here because it's sort of the easier one. Yeah, uh, I work in Swahiba Networks. I've been with them for uh, since last year, August, and I'm really happy to serve with them because uh, it does align with my passion in serving the community. For Swahiba, we have a program called Jitambwe Purity Program, and I serve as the coordinator of that program. Uh, we do high school ministry, and in that we uh, engage in schools in Kibera, a number of them we do have, and we engage, the, the Jitambwe Purity Program is majorly for ladies in the high school, and uh, we talk to them, we do understand that even after engaging with them for a while, we understand that there are a lot of issues that, this, uh, that these ladies actually encounter living in the Kibera slums. And therefore, we saw an opportunity to just come in and be there for them so that they may feel like they they don't have to go through these issues alone. They have someone they can talk to. And as you can see, uh, my age is still young, so our age bracket is not that like that far. So they kind of get to relate with with someone who is almost their age or just slightly above their age, you know. Yeah, so we speak to these ladies and uh, just trying to get them to know how to deal with the issues they encounter and to live a positive life in Kibera. Uh, getting them to understand that uh, regardless of where you have been born and what uh, challenges you are going through, you are still a powerful lady and you can be able to make differences. Despite of the mistakes you might have done before, there are, there are ways there are, you can recover yourself, you know, you can upgrade, you can um, be a better person in the community. It hasn't been easy for Peter, but he is a master of his own art. He reveals to me his secret to success. There are many challenges um, in this community uh, because you, you find that a lot of young people, they do not have, um, they do not have a role model from a previous generation that may have gone to university or have broken off from the poverty cycle. And so because of, because of um, what you don't know, you don't know. And you know, if you're not exposed to something, you are not, you, you are not aware of it. A lot of them um, are limited to just thinking that once they have an IG, uh, high school education, then that becomes enough. So beyond that, particularly for girls, they would think about you know, either getting married or getting into doing manual jobs that might not pay them very well, or sometimes, worst case scenario, getting into vices like prostitution and crime uh, that eventually wrecks their lives completely. And so those challenges are there, but that is part of the reason why we are here. Uh, uh, to to mitigate and help make a difference and journey with those that uh, have chosen to walk alongside of us so that we can positively transform their lives. Um, economically, it's it's also very challenging uh, because a, a lot of people who live in this community uh, may not necessarily have the the level of education or the skill sets that that pay very well so a lot of people would leave this community and go and fend for manual jobs that pay you know very minimally and because of that they live from one paycheck to another paycheck um, and it is not very easy to break from that 
when um, when the conditions under which you live are very tough, yet the the resources that are available to you are also are also limited. And um, and so one of the things that we encourage, uh, particularly young people, um, is not to stop with just a high school education. It's to add um, value to their lives by. Um, attending any online classes they can, uh, adding any necessary uh, skills that they that they, they can, so that then they become competitive, um, and even when the opportunities are there, they are able to compete with the within the limited opportunity. Away from the business of life, our hero knows how to calm his mind and reflect on life through creative writing. I've written two books. Mm -hmm. uh, the the first. The first book is, uh, is called, um, they call it a slum, we call it home. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people call this Kibera slums. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we, uh, people who live here call it home. They don't call it the slums, they, they call, call it, it home. home. Yeah, so that's the title of the book. Mm -hmm. And the book is to, um, the, the essence of the book is to just to give uh, people who don't live in this community uh, a sneak preview of what life is like, particularly for children. And I've, I've written it from a perspective of an of a 8 to a 12 year old mm -hmm. to uh, understand uh, what, what life is like, the challenges these children face, and uh, give them an opportunity to um, think about how they can engage mm -hmm. and possibly even, um, even make a difference in, in that community. Mm -hmm. So it's an, it's an interesting read, uh, plenty of illustrations. Mm -hmm. And um, and and also just um, just you know just just fun. So in every page, there's a new word. Mm -hmm. There's a new word in every page. So uh, children can children can actually uh, learn a new word uh, every time uh, they, they they flip a page. Okay. Yeah. And there's the other book. Yeah, uh, the other book is called Loved by You, mm -hmm. and the essence of the book is to share the story of Swahiba um, over the last twenty. 20, 21 years mm -hmm. and how um, the impact it has had but also the journey that it has taken, the highs and the lows. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for instance, in that book, there's a story of a young man called, uh, uh, called Amphrey. Uh, mm -hmm. Amphrey, one time, he was, um, uh, he went to, uh, he was part of a, of a crew that went on, on what they called Misheni. Uh, they went to, uh, to commit some crime, basically. Oh, that's a Yeah, <laughs> and, and, uh, and things went south, and um, and they they, they they started getting shot at uh, by the police, mm -hmm. and um, several of his friends were shot at. And Humphrey actually framed death. He he, he actually framed himself dead, mm -hmm. and um, they ended up taking all the bodies to uh, to um, to the morgue, to the city morgue, and um, and he stayed dead among his friends, so that he didn't actually get killed. Um, but then uh, his life completely changed. Uh, we invited him to come to a, a youth camp that we had. Uh, we mentored him, worked with him, and now he's, 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 uh, he's a married man. Um, amazing things happening in his life. And uh, we've, um, we've, we've documented his story in the book. And many, many other young people, I had a, I had a young man who, was, um, who lived in my home, his name is Victor. Uh, we've documented this story in, in, in that book. Uh, uh, Victor was literally just being abused by his auntie uh, who was living in this community with him. He'd wake up at 3 a.m. to make samosas and pastries. Um, and so one time I, I picked Victor and <laughs> Victor lived with, in my house for four years. Um, and during the time when Victor lived with us, we had the best samosas and chapatis because he was, a, yeah, he was only like maybe 11, 12 years old, but he was very good at cooking. He had, he had learned, okay. yeah, he was very good at cooking. He, was, he used to wake up at 3 a.m. to cook uh, in, the, in uh, his auntie's uh, kibanda. And so he became very good at doing, uh, at doing pastries. And so uh, the period when he lived with us and he had a chance to go back to school. And he's now a married man uh, with children. Um, and uh, those are the things that, you know, make me want to do this again and again. Uh, the book is available uh, in... Um, uh, local bookshops, uh, but also on our on our website, uh, you can order the book uh, from our website, um, and also on our uh, social media platforms. And there's a soft copy. Yes, you can also order soft copies yeah, on can, Amazon. Um, I've just finished writing another book. It's oh. called It's Possible. 
just finished yeah and it's it's a it's a children's book as well uh, looking at uh, environment how we can we can actually uh, conserve and protect our environment and uh, make a difference individually and corporately and um, that book again is uh, as is excellent illustrations uh, but it has focused on all of us working together to conserve and protect the environment so that's uh, that that says it's a uh, hot coming hot um, on the release date. I'm also writing another book that talks, um, that focuses on the mental health of children. Um, I think we, there's a conversation going on right now about mental health, but it's, it's kind of leaning on, on the adult rather than the children. So I'm taking the perspective of, um, of how do we make sure that, um, that children are healthy mentally and what are the things and safeguards that we need to put in place to make sure that children are, um, are, um, are healthy mentally and they are growing mentally because everything starts with the mind. So a healthy mind um, translates into a healthy community and, and, and an excellent, a healthy co uh, nation as well. No nation can prosper in anything without the input and ideas of its youths. That is the reason why this gentleman has taken to himself to ensure that this group of people is taken care of for the prosperity of our society. The future is bright. The future is exceptionally bright uh, because we want to our desire is to replicate this um, in various parts of this nation uh, on, on this region of Africa and across this continent. That is, that is our desire. Um, so we are working very hard for uh, this concept to work because this concept is, is designed to be a facility that uh, makes it possible for an organization to function but also brings resources into the organization financial resources and so uh, and so once we are fully fledged and this place is, is fully operational with all the, the programs and the plans we do have um, our hope is that it will be able to sustain itself uh, resource the programs here and then be able to uh, use this as a replica or a blueprint uh, for uh, other regions of this nation and really be able to do this nationally but then also regionally and uh, also all over the continent of Africa. Africa has 1.3 billion people and that's a lot of people to uh, reach. If there is someone who is faithful and truthful in the world, it's Peter. He will, uh, uh, you know, running an organization in one place uh, for 20 years is not easy. People who started with him uh, I think uh, majority of them maybe they have walked out or they pulled out and they are doing something else. And his consistency and the zeal that he has and the passion to serve the community of Kibera. He has never gone to any other place since day one he came to Kibera. So I would say that he's a, he's a very faithful guy who walk in obedient in accordance on how God has called him to. To do because if, if if it were somebody else running an organization which um, a growing organization not even a grown the one the one that is now growing slowly for more than 20 years in one place it might not be easy it's quite a task for some people he is very focused in achieving every single thing, the thing that is aligned, you know, uh, he needs to do this. And then he's a, person, he's a person who actually thinks quite fast. So whenever we have a solution, a problem, he knows what solution to give at what time. So, um, and then he's, yes, he's a fast thinker. And I'm glad that he actually encourages us because we are a number, of, uh, a number of the staff. So he encourages us on, you know, just working together. He gets involved in actually the programs that we do, the different programs. So uh, I'd say that is a very good person to work with, yeah? I'd highly recommend. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's been nice. It's been nice working with Peter. I'd like to say thank you so much to Mr. Peter Abungu for giving me this opportunity of uh, reaching out to the community and the Swahiba networks you what wing is sana one is attack up this opportunity but the passion in that uh, womb to me and as a poor opportunity is not 
labda whatever Swaiba is doing. But uh, Peter, I'm to trust Sana with the everything that we do in the community. And God, I'm going to Sana, 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 Sana. Sana kabisa kabisa with this vision and mission to go back to go come go and we are here to support him we are here to pray with him and also to work with him the CEO Peter Abungu I'm so grateful for this program that he has put up for young girls out in the slums since the slum you know is a place which is not good for young girls so I'm so grateful to him for making us be independent as young ladies before we continue with our tertiary education. I, I want to say that um, this nation is a great nation, a great opportunities. I think those, those that have had the privilege of traveling around the world and particularly the continent of Africa, when you come back home, you have a, a very different worldview of how blessed Kenya is. We are actually a very blessed nation. And all of us, um, if we're able to rise to the occasion, I know we have so many challenges, but rise to the occasion and do what we can with the resources or the places where we've been planted, we're able to make a difference. Personally, I came from a very affluent nation, came back to Kenya in 2002 when things were literally falling apart. Um, but I, I've been able to, um, I've been able to bath this vision and and see it grow to the to the level that it has grown and if i can do it anyone can and i want to encourage anyone watching uh, today that please don't give up there is hope uh, for the bible says that there's hope even for a tree even though it's cut it will sprout again mm -hmm.